So I want to give all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Rachel Kudash. Double honors to the elders and the apostles of Great Millstone, and peace and blessings to the elect. And um, I have a couple of articles here, you know, going into uh, some some uh, interesting headlines. You know, um, a couple months back, I used to do some uh, streams entitled it uh, "Fearful Headlines." Well, you could say this would fall into that category, okay? Because um, here, as you can see, you have uh, hyperinflation, you know, setting in nicely. Um, it says here, egg prices at grocery stores hyperinflate ahead of Thanksgiving. And, you know, people like to celebrate Thanksgiving. And it's always about, oh, one thing I'm thankful for is this. One thing I'm thankful for is that. All right, but... This Thanksgiving, people are going to be having a lot more things not to be thankful for, you know. But nevertheless, let's let's read this real quick. So it says, um, egg supplies are tightening nationwide as more than 37 million egg-laying hens have died this year. 37 million. That is a lot. All right. Have died this year uh, due to the severe birth, uh, bird flu outbreak, accounting for, an, uh, for a whopping... 10% of production. The result has been soaring uh, egg prices at the supermarket ahead of holiday season. Uh, and pretty much um, due to uh, uh, various factors, you know, this is happening and it's going to go into it. It says uh, prices of eggs climbed more than 10% from September to October. That was That was over a month. Okay. Climbing more than 10% in a month. It says, according to the latest consumer price index data, prices in October were 43% higher than the same a month, uh, the same month a year ago. Eggs had the biggest jump by far on a monthly and yearly uh, basis in any category in the United States uh, Department of Agriculture's food price outlook. And pretty much, it, it, you know, at first you would, you know, a month last month people would, were paying. Uh, up to a dollar and eighty-two cents, and now they're paying three dollars and forty-two cents. So that's a that's a, a a huge jump, right? They may not seem like it at first, but no, that that adds up, man. Okay, um, and then they they're going into basically how due to the bird flu, um, a lot of these birds are dying, and that's causing that's driving um, prices to 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 go up. Right, it says readers have been well informed this year about the devastating bird flu outbreak ravaging commercial poultry farms nationwide. It says the recent spike in extraordinary uh is, is extraordinary in the shell egg as well as egg produced or egg product markets. Uh Bill Lapp, president of Advanced Economic Solutions, a consulting firm specializing in food economics, uh told CNBC. Besides eggs, food inflation remained at the highest levels since the late 1970s. And yet, people still walk around like it's all good. Okay? Right, so it says here, uh, besides eggs, food inflation... Right, so pretty much nobody has been... Um, you know, it's it, people are, are behaving as though this is just regular. You know, it just happens, it is what it is. No, it's, it's not just it is what it is. When you lose your job, and prices are going up higher and higher. And it's going to show you that what's happening to, to people here. It says, um, crushing the pocketbooks of Americans as they drain their savings and rack up credit credit card debt to buy essentials. Breakfast was the cheapest meal of the day, but has since become expensive thanks to soaring egg, bread, meat, and orange juice prices. See? And these are things that you normally, people normally buy, right? You buy eggs, you buy bread, you make an omelet, you make a sandwich, you buy meat, you know, and orange juice, all of these things. But now it's becoming expensive just to, just to have breakfast, let alone have uh, three meals of a day or in a day. It says the last bird flu out, the, the last bird flu outbreak was in 2015. This current outbreak appears much worse in terms of just egg prices. And it's not going to stop there, okay? And how do we know that? Because it's it's prophesied that there's going to be a famine. So, and, and there's going to be hyperinflation. That's Revelation the 6th chapter. 
Okay. So now, seeing how this is affecting the actual uh, uh, people, it says inflation shocked Americans plan to cut back on Christmas gifts, donations to charity. As 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 Americans feel the grinch of inflation and wages struggle to keep up with consumer prices, retailers and charities nationwide are preparing for a light holiday season. How about a no holiday season? It says the U.S. consumers uh, and businesses have trimmed spending or spending plans for gifts, charitable contributions, and holiday events day to show. Yeah, because people don't have money for that. They barely have money for essentials, and now they, they got to worry about getting you a gift? For what? Uh, that that secret Santa joint? That uh, they ain't, People ain't interested in that. They're not interested in that right now. And on top of that, you try to go buy a gift, and it's going to be super expensive. Now you're wondering, is it worth it to, to use my money on this? Because remember, you got Thanksgiving, you got Black Friday, and then you got Christmas. That's the holiday season where people spend a lot. They can't afford, to, they got to, because you know, Thanksgiving, people go spend a ridiculous amount of money making a ridiculous amount of food that they, they're not even going to eat all of that in that night. Right? So it says here, the penny pinching uh, threatens to spoil the year end for many, especially firms and nonprofits that tally their largest sales uh, share of sales and, and donations in November and December. Yeah, well, this is this is just the beginning of, of the, the spoiling. All right. Um, it says here, according to, the, to an October Census Bureau uh, survey of households, 41% of Americans, or around 95 million people, said they were having difficulties paying for essential household expenses. You hear that? Not just regular, essential. The word essential, look that up. It's some very important stuff. Okay? Versus 29% a year earlier. So the numbers jumped up. From 29% who were struggling last year to now it has gone up to 41%. Okay? Um, it says we're hopeful for a strong giving season, season um, but we're not counting on it, said uh, Thomas T, Chief Executive of Direct Relief. Yeah, okay. Despite a strong job market, which, well, all right, they just said the unemployment um, rates are going back up again, a little cushion in savings accounts and early signs that inflation might, might may be slowing, the high cost of living has unnerved Americans. Yeah, so now they're starting to feel it over here. And don't be fooled by that. All right, these devils, regardless of what, what direction inflation goes in, their plan is not to save the old world as you know it. Okay? Definitely not to save that. Um, it says, according to the University of Michigan, household sentiment over the past six months is comparable to the credit crisis when unemployment was off the charts and the financial system was at the uh, uh, pre precipice uh, or precipice the journal notes that the in the index echoes wary levels of the 1970s when inflation climbed to double digits. Well, in the 1970s, prior to that time, the economy wasn't as bad as it is now. Well, this is post 1970s, and now you're you're being hit with another crisis. So let's see how it handles that. Now, on top of that, you also have here, as it says, corporate defaults uh, would more than double even in mild recession, which basically meaning that when a company or an individual defaults, that means they, they miss or they're not able to make their payments, whether it's interest payments or just installment payments or whatever the case is, right? And so when they default, that means they don't make their payments. And now they're saying corporate defaults, so like corporate companies, you know, or big companies that what do companies do? Companies take out loans from banks, right? Why do they need to do that? So that they can, you know, for example, a company building, guess what? Just like you pay mortgage, the company pays mortgage. They pay you uh, a building, you know, pay for utilities. They do all these things, right? And most of the time, they don't just come out of pocket with that. They they take out loans and they use it to take care of these things. And then they use it to take care of company uh, materials and, you know, uh, property and, you know, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Not property. Um, uh, equipment. 
all right, company equipment and all of that. So they got to pay for all these things. Then they got to pay you. They got to get paid, the, uh, you know, the payroll and everything. So, so yeah, so moving on, this is the next article. All right, it says here, UK faces worst economic downturn among G7 nations. All right, so pretty much what you're seeing is, as the saying is, uh, uh, change through crisis. All right, there's a lot of uh, 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 things that are happening, problems that need solutions, and it's affecting a lot of individuals. It's affecting countries, it's affecting people, it's affecting businesses, all right? And it's set up that way so that, <laughs> set up that way so that um, they can bring in that change, okay? And say that we need to bring in a change in order to solve all of these problems. We need to bring in this solution. Now, at the same time, a lot of countries are adopting this uh, CBDCs. They're doing pilot programs. They're looking into it. They're they're moving towards that digital, uh, uh, um, you know, that digital uh, 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 way of, of of tracking everything, of of having payments and doing all of that. Okay. So now, and at the end of the day, man, this isn't gonna stop. It's gonna get worse. It, it, it what it does is it's like a. You know, it, it looks like it, it's, it starts to get better, then it gets worse, then it gets, then it gets, but that's, that's as it says in Habakkuk, the second chapter, though it tarry, wait for it. Before it will surely come, it will not tarry. Now, this is the book of Zephaniah, chapter 1, verse 17. It says, and I will bring distress upon men, and that they shall walk like blind men, because they have sinned against the Lord, and their blood shall be poured out as dust, and their flesh as the dung. But the main point right there is the Lord said what? He's going to bring distress upon men, all right? That they shall walk like blind men, not having a sense of direction. So now when you look into the word distress, okay, we have here uh, Tazara, um, which says to bind, be narrow, be in distress, cause distress. It says here to shut up, um, to press hard upon, to suffer distress, to show hostility towards, vex, vexer, harasser, <laughs> okay, oppress, pangs. So this is what the Lord is going to bring upon men, all right? Men, people that, are, when it says men, it's really referring to people that are not of the elect because that's, the troubles are going to come and they're not going to be delivered out of it. See, the, 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 the troubles are going to come regardless, we're not, we're not here to try and stop the troubles. We're here that low women may be delivered from the troubles. Okay? And moving on, this is the book of Judges, chapter 10, verse uh, 13. And this is why the Lord is going to bring distress upon men. Because as it's especially Israelites. Yet ye have forsaken me. Okay? Yet ye have forsaken me. This is the Lord, the Lord saying this to Israel. Okay, or, or, you know, the message from the Lord, I should put it. It says, and served other gods. And that's what they do even today. And now that we, we come to tell them the truth, they call us hate, a hate group. You know, and they make fun of us. And they, they mock and they scoff and they demonize. But wh what you're doing, you know, th see, this the Lord. This is why the Most High is going to bring judgment. Because the Most High is, is, he's not with this other joint of, 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 uh, 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 other, you know, you do what you want to do and you, you serve this God and you serve this God, but we could all come together. Hell no. Okay. And this is the energy that the most high is going to give you. He says, yet ye have forsaken me. You're supposed to serve one God, the most high. You're supposed to serve him one way. Not how you feel. It says, and served other gods. You, 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 you embraced other walks of life. Wherefore I will deliver you no more. Yeah, because you 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 got you got other gods, so go to them. The the condition to serve the Lord is just like just like a condition to be with a man or a man in his right mind is if I'm your man, I'm your man. Who the fuck? You know what I'm saying? Like you 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 you, you think of it like this, right? If you're a man, does it make sense for you to have a woman? That is here saying, oh, no, 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 I want to be with you, but I want to be with three other dudes, you know, and then I, and then I want you to still have to provide the same, uh, provi uh, you know, provisions and protections and have the same responsibility, but I'm not going to be loyal to just you. I'm going to be loyal to you and three other dudes. So what's the man going to say? He's going to say, no, 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 
When some shit happens, you go to them three dudes and have them take care of you. Don't come to me. The condition to be with me, the condition to have my protection and me take care of you is you're loyal to me. Ain't no, what the hell are you talking about three other dudes? You're crazy as hell. Okay? You're crazier than hell. So that's the same thing here. That's But that's what Israel is doing. You you wanna you wanna serve other gods. You don't want to be loyal to the Most High. You want to accept all walks of life. But when some shit goes down, you expect the Most High to come and deliver you. What type of shit is that? It says so. That's why verse fourteen. That's why the Most High got this attitude about it. It says, "Go and cry unto the gods which ye have chosen. Let them deliver you in the time of your tribulation." So that's like if your woman steps out on you and and then some shit goes down, but she's calling you. You, no, no, no. You you call whoever it was. Don't don't come over here. Right? So that's what the Lord is saying here. Go and cry unto the gods which ye have chosen. You don't want to serve Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai. Right? You don't want to take heed to the words that he has sent us to come and give unto you. So when the trouble comes, don't come asking for help over here. Go go stay with the same gods that you the Christ, you know, and then and, and the Allahs and the Buddhas and all of that. Stay there. Okay, call them to deliver you, right? Let them deliver you in the time of your tribulation. And the Lord is saying that because he knows that, guess what? They're not going to be able to because there's only one true living power, and his name is Yahweh. Bars. All right, but in any case, yeah, that's pretty much it, what's going on here, man. So these are all signs showing you, but it's, it's so interesting, as we always say, that these are literally warning signs. When, when this... When it when Jacob's trouble hits in full effect, you can't say that you didn't know or you weren't aware or how could this happen. The, the warning signs were all over the place. You just never took heed. Anyway, with that, I'm going to end it here, Lord willing, that was edifying to the elect. In closing, I want to give all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Rakha Kodesh. Until next time, Shalom.